Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. And today's game up on the tabletop is, nice to know, Animals by Hoof Games. It's a one to six player game for ages eight and up, but takes about 15 minutes per player to play. In the game, Nice to Know Animals, you are going to be choosing an animal and playing as a researcher traveling around the world to study and research animals. It's a tableau management game where you're going to be spending research points and hopefully obtaining new animals all around the world. And at the end of the game, when somebody's either hit five endangered species on their tableau or 18 of any species, the game will end and you'll score points based on the animal and its location or how many points it's worth individually, as well as any of your quest cards you may have gained throughout the game. And whoever has the most points is the winner. There's additionally a solo player mode with solo stickers so you can play all by yourself if you'd like or mix it up with up to six different players. All right, let's go ahead and get into how to play the game and set up and of course my review. To begin the game, nice to know animals, the first thing you do is you take the main game board and place it within reach of all players. Then take the orange cube and place it on the number one slot on the track as well as a trophy cube on each of the spaces with a trophy indicator. Take the blue cube and place it at the very bottom on zero, which will be your endangered species track, which will move to five and that will end the game in that way. The board is going to have a number of different locations where you'll be placing your animal. Speaking of animals, each player will get to choose an animal as their researcher. I chose the king penguin, but there are a total of I believe 13 different animals or 14 different animals that you can go ahead and choose to play in the game. The animal is going to come with a reference card, which will explain not only the penguin itself, but additionally the flow of the game, how you can study and research, research and flight, quest, and of course the game's end. The deck of cards, nice to know animals, will be shuffled, and then you're going to put them in two stacks if you want, or one stack, and then deal out uh, three sets of three cards to make a three by three grid. Take your quest cards, shuffle that deck, and then deal two to each player. Each player will choose one of these cards to start the game off with, and only one of the quests on the card can be obtained at the game's end. You can only have a total of three quest cards with three total quests complete at the end of the game, so you should be left with a penguin, a quest card, and of course your reference. After that, set aside your research points and additional cubes you'll use throughout the game, and move aside anything else you're not using, and you're ready to play the game. Playing the game Nice to Know Animals is quite simple, and there's a flow to the game. Basically, I take mine, you take yours, and back and forth we take turns up until one of the two endings is reached. Either somebody hits 18 animals or somebody hits five endangered animals, in which case we go ahead and do one final round, make even turns, and we score using this chart here to see who wins the game. On your turn, you'll get to take one of two actions. You can either research or you can study. When you choose to do one of these, you'll then pass and the next player will get to go. And it's explained on your reference how this works. If you would like to study, you will first choose one of these uh, rows here and to take an animal away from. Basically, you're going to go ahead and study those animals and gain research points. If you take an animal from the first row, that will give you one research point. The second is two and the third is three. So I can go ahead and get rid of this uh, griffin vulture putting it in the discard pile, and then I can gain three research points. There are brown and black tokens. They just simply mean that there is three or one research point, and place it in front of you. Any card that has been removed from this grid here is always going to make that specific column go down one space, and you're going to refill it with a new animal from the card deck here. The next action that you can take as opposed to study is you can research. To research, you're going to be spending your research points, in order to gain animals and place them in your tableau. To purchase an animal from the first row is five research, the second is three, and the final row is one. So it's definitely cheaper to get the ones on the bottom, but those ones have not been taken as likely, so they're gonna be cheaper in that regard. I could spend then three research points to take maybe this walrus here. And once again, when I take this walrus, I'll move that column down and I'll add a new card from the deck. Additionally, in order to take an animal, you must have to be in that animal's continent when you choose to take it. So I cannot take a walrus from Asia, Europe, or North America without being in Asia, Europe, or North America. At the start of the game, when you haven't placed your animal down yet, or your researcher, as soon as you take your first animal, you'll then choose to place your animal in one of the three regions, or one region, or whatever regions are available for that animal on the board. In this case, it's Asia, Europe, and North America, so I can place my penguin in any of those three continents. And I'll go ahead and select North America. 
So now whenever I take animals from now on, whenever I do my research action, it must be an animal that is available in North America. And after I gain the walrus, I will end my turn. And back and forth we will go. I will study or I will research and then of course I will pass. There's additionally another unique aspect to the game is when I choose to take an animal, if they're not in the location and I need to get to that location, I can fly there. And there are two ways to do that. One way is I can spend nine research points in addition to the research points I need for that animal. It's a quite expensive process. I can spend nine to fly to Asia and then I can spend one for this Bezor Ebex, totaling 10 to gain this and put it into my tableau. Whenever I do not have nine, I'm gonna to have to rely on flight cards. There are cards in this deck here that are flight cards. They look like this, they're sponsored flights, and they're going to let me, let me fly to any animal in that specific row in the grid here. So for instance, if this Northern Ball Ebus wasn't here, and instead it was a sponsored flight, if I'd like to travel to any uh, different region on the map, I could choose to use a sponsored flight, I'd gain it for free, and then I could go to, look, this is a Coretta Coretta. This is a turtle that exists all around the world. I can take this Coretta Coretta for one research point, and I can now move to any spot on the world. If I instead had chosen the Ebex, I would have to actually move to Asia, but I'm already there, so instead I'm gonna go to South America. Once I take a flight card and that animal, once again, these columns are going to move down and I'm going to reveal new animal cards. So those are the two main actions. You can study, removing them to gain research points, uh, or you can research by spending resources in order to gain the animal, provided that you're in the location. And if you're not in the location, you can spend for flight to then purchase one. And if you can't afford that, or maybe you wanna spend less, you can take a sponsored flight, provided it's on this grid here, to fly to any animal in that specific row. Whenever you gain an animal, if you're the highest amount of animals, if your tableau has the highest amount of animals, you're gonna be moving this little orange marker here. And when this orange marker hits these little points here on the map, or on the, on the marker here, this track, you're gonna gain these little tokens. These tokens are yellow cubes that are basically worth two victory points at the end of the game. And when you reach these locations, you're also going to add yellow cubes to any spot on the map that doesn't already have a person there or one of the animals for the researchers. So these are ways in which you'll gain points indicating the game is being progressed and also a way in which when you move to areas with yellow cubes that have been placed there from going to this specific area on the track, you'll gain additional points as the game moves on. To track to see if an animal is endangered, you'll need to look on the top right hand side. If it has a little negative face, a little sad face, that'll indicate that that is an endangered animal. And if you have one, you'll move it uh, on this track here, the blue marker to indicate that you have at least one. And this track is just to symbolize who has the most of each in each category. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. There is a few unique aspects to the game. Like for instance, there are duplicate animals in the game. And if I pick up a duplicate, what I'll do is I'll discard that duplicate. I'll choose two quest cards and I will pick one of them to keep. You may never have more than three quests complete, but you can always take additional quests. However, you can only do one of the two on each card and only up to three of them total. And these quests have a variety of different things you're gonna be searching for in the game, which I'll cover in my review. And that's basically the idea of the game. At the end of the game, after somebody has hit either 18 animals or five endangered, you're gonna do the scoring, which will be, uh, one side of a quest, so one of one of each of the sides of each quest card that you have, max of three, right? Uh, some of your cards points, which means all your animals and flights will have a number on them at the top right, you'll score those. The most sponsored flight cards, whoever has the most, most carnivorous animals, herbivores, sad faces, invitation certificates, and it goes on from there. The person who has the most in Europe, in Asia, North America, and South America, as well as combinations of cards. There's a lot of scoring that takes place at the end of this game. But yeah, that's the basic idea of the game. We'll get into my review. I'll cover some of the unique little aspects to kind of the educational benefit to this game and whether or not you should pick this one up. Nice to Know Animals is a tableau management game. You'll be going to be spending points in order to gain animals from regions that you're in, moving from region to region to gain new animals, and trying to score as many points based on this sheet here. And there is a lot of ways to score points in the game. I want to cover a few unique aspects to the game that I didn't mention in my, re in my like, talking through of how the game is played. And first we'll cover these cards here. This is a Golden Lion Tamarin. 
It's from South America, and on the top right tells you how many points you get at the end of the game, whether it is a carnivore or herbivore, or if it's omnivore, and then whether if it's, not, if it's endangered. The very bottom is a nice to know fact indicating the length and weight of the animal as well as something unique like the 20 Brazilian real note is printed by the Brazilian Central Bank and features the golden lion. Kind of cool. And so each of these animals has a nice to know little factoid attached to them. And they also work in tandem with victory points. South America, I need more South American animals. Speaking of that, how you're going to be utilizing their data, not only from the scoring here, but also on quest cards. Maybe you're going to be looking for a mammal with a, um, a, mammal with a shell, or maybe you're going to be looking for five animals that live in North America. And you can choose either of these quests to do on the singular card here. Or perhaps you're researching an animal threatened because of palm oil consumption by humans. Or you're going to research seven animals living in Asia. Each of these quests has a unique individual animal you're searching for, or a large group of animals in a, from a certain region. And you can kind of decide how you'd like to search for them. There's also a little cheat sheet that explains, oh, the, the, an animal with a fake horn? That's the white rhinoceros from Africa. And there are two cards in the deck. There's a little cheat sheet to explain things in case you cannot figure it out on your own. As you move from flight to flight, gathering new animals, spending research points, you're going to be trying to kind of gauge the grid here and what type of animals exist there and where you're going to want to pick up points. As you gather new animals, whether it be removing them from the board to prevent other players from gaining them or if you just simply need the research points, while also attempting to score animals by either spending quite a lot for the animals at the top and a little bit less for the ones at the bottom, you're going to be trying to create patterns. You're going to be trying to create patterns of animals based on your quest cards as well as scoring points of the end game. The game has got this kind of educational aspect to it. It kind of reminds me of a game that you see at like a National History Museum type of gift shop where, or, or like a, a zoo as well. This would be a great board game for a like zoo gift shop. It explains a bunch of different animals and their facts. It's got a strong theme to it. It's got a strong mechanical like variance to it. It works really well at what it does. The game is fairly long though. This game plays probably with uh, four players, like an hour, or hour and a half. It's, it's a pretty chunky game. This is not, even though the game itself, the mechanics are fairly simple and it's straightforward and the turns are pretty quick, there is a lengthy aspect to the game because you need to have 18 cards in your tableau or somebody has to have five endangered species in their tableau, which they don't come around very often. In this one grid, there's just one of them. And I think I think we've actually never actually ended the game with somebody getting five endangered animals, specifically because other people will take them because they're worth quite a bit of points. They're worth three points a piece. And so typically the game is going to end with 18 animals. I believe there's also a shorter version of the game, which you can play up to 15 animals, which is probably not a bad idea. And there's also a unique aspect to all the different like types of animals that you can play as. And there's a large variety of animals with a ton of really cool little meeples. There's like a turtle and a lion and a panda bear and a koala and a giraffe and all these extra additives that didn't need to be added, but just were. And that was really nice about the game. What's also nice about the game is the artwork. The artwork is fantastic. Having all the different pieces of clip art from all the different animals and their factoids and this little world map that is simple in nature. It's a world map that you just go around from location to location, but works exactly as intended for this game. The quality is excellent. It's got a nice magnetic box with enough space to hold all the cards in it, as well as the cards being high quality, thick and beautiful, and they feel good to hold. The tokens are also nice as well. You have these little wooden markers here and the cubes work very well for the game. Everything is really well made for nice to know animals. Minus the uh, little bit length of the game, it can, it can overstay its welcome for some people. Everything else about this game is quite wonderful. It's a great little tableau management game with a ton of little factoids, it's educational value for younger kids to learn about different animals from around the world and where they exist and what they do, how big they are and all this kind of stuff. And it ties into the game so you can have this experience and play as long as you want learning about all these unique animals. And the scoring aspect of the game is pretty intense. You're probably not gonna remember everything. You're gonna remember about all the quests and and sums of your cards and your flights, carnivorous and herbivores, sad faces, blah, 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 blah. It just goes on and on. There's a lot of scoring that takes place for a small tableau management game. So it has a nice meaty weight to the game. Overall, Nice to Know Animals is a beautiful game. It's got some great factoids, works really well. If you're looking for an educational board game about animal factoids, as well as a great tableau manager, then this is definitely the game for you. However, if you're looking for a very light game, this is definitely more in the medium weight category just due to its length and the amount of different things that you're gonna be doing as you score at the end of the game. 
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Nice to Know Animals. If you're interested in picking up this title, there's a link down below in the description currently available to you on Kickstarter. You can also, if you think we've earned it and you've watched more than one of our videos, consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification button, the subscribe button, so you can see us put out new content Monday through Thursday, as well as, of course, on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we do a live stream. And, of course, Thursdays, we additionally will do a whatnot stream, selling games, talking about games, introducing new games to the mesh. Looking forward to you guys telling me what you guys think about uh, Nice to Know Animals. I hope you do go ahead and check out this campaign because it's a really, really well made game with some beautiful aspects to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to traveling the world and getting to know some animals with you next time.